um, which would be great. And first thing I want to do is welcome Phyllis to our group. Thank you for joining us. That's uh, great. I'm going to, this thing's sitting right there in the middle of my screen. Continue. You're muted. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. It's, it's good to have you on board. Um, welcome, Phyllis. Um, as a matter of housekeeping only, um, I did speak with Charlie Smith. He called me the um, last weekend, not this weekend, uh, regarding uh, our member, um, Roger Winiarski. Roger had stopped by with, talked to him briefly, and Roger's still taking care of his wife, who is very, in very desperate condition. So uh, all thoughts and prayers go to Roger. Um, fortunately, evidently, he's lost an enormous amount of weight. He's really working hard to take care of his wife. Um, there's some real serious lung issues, I guess. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah. And it's in case anyone's wondering, you know, it's the old attendance issues. Um, okay. Uh, first item on deck is the minutes of October 5, 2020, beautifully prepared by our member, Greg Banner. Um, any comments or such on those, please? I reviewed them earlier today, as a matter of fact, and I didn't see any problems. So um, I would make a, uh, a motion to accept the minutes. Good All those in favor by a roll call vote. Andy? Yes, in favor. Charles? In favor. Dave? Yes. Greg? Yes. Paul? Yes. Phyllis? Yeah, mute yourself, Phyllis. Yes. There you go. Okay. And I, I vote yes, obviously, as well. And that's just alphabetically by your first names, folks. So, um, all right. Public comment section. Action cannot be taken on by motion on topics raised. Any have, anyone have any comments? Or is there anybody? Um, uh, Mr. Rise, is there anyone in the audience at all other than just the members of the commission? Andrew Rise, we were. He's. Yeah. I guess if there were, he'd tell us, I hope, um, because he's operating the, the thing. And, and a mystery as to how that works, but no, neither here nor there. No construction reports. Sea level rise, Chip. Sea level rise, well, it keeps going up. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. When we, when we last spoke, we were talking about the idea of having a get trying to get a uh, group of people down to see exactly what's going on at Fogland to try to bring the you know the, the elected officials, if you would, those who are going to be responsible for the problem. Obviously, we have something going on this week that you know they were distracted, and I think we should probably make it a goal this in about two weeks' time to say, okay, guys, not. You know, I don't know what kind of turnover we're going to have, but typical, typically we have some turnover. And you get some excited new members that will respond to anything, which is good. Get them down to see what's going on at Fogland and say, here's where your problem's going to be, folks. This is obviously we have sea level rise affecting um, general populations, but this is one that you're going to get cut off from. Um, I think it's a very constructive um Goal, but honestly, yeah, um, Stone Bridge will be next after that. Mm -hmm. Would it? You think? I think the elevations are such. When you say the Stone Bridge chip, you mean the abutment itself, or that that area? That area, right? But you, know, you know, it'll be a while before just the level itself. But as the level goes up and the storm intensity and the rain goes up, anything that's fairly low, like <clears> Stone Bridges, they're next in line. Right. I mean, we had some super tides this past month. We had a five seven, yeah. um, which made me wish my dock was a foot and a half taller. Um, but it one of them in a big storm, man. Hmm. Yeah. It was it was blowing good. I had wave splash coming up through the plank of the of the actual um, wharf part of it. You know, not that I saw it, but I saw the residual of it on the on the boards. Yeah. Which surprised me. Um, Hey, I got a question. The uh, you're saying have a meeting or have a 
kind of a tour with the town council. Does that require, is that a public meeting? Is that going to take the place of this one or how does it, it work? It wouldn't take the place. It would be just be a special meeting. We just have to notice the public that, hey, we're getting together and there's, you know, a certain number of people are going to be there. Technically, um, we don't have a quorum until we have five, but even if we have four people there, three people there, we, it, we theoretically should notice that we're going to do like a site walk, if you will. And um, I can run that by the solicitor. Um, I'll confirm with the solicitor what kind of notification we need to do. Well, the wind blows well usually there, so COVID, wear your mask, should be okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, we didn't receive any correspondence at all. Uh, I didn't anyways. I would and I didn't I can't get to our mailbox in town hall, but I don't think we got any. Um, next we have the Sapowit and Fogland boat ramps issues as always. Um, with regard to the Sapowit one, I drove down there and I th if that's a public right away, I think volunteers such as myself uh, can trim back the shrubs a bit so that people can access it better. Do you think you'd be interested in being involved in that, Paul? Well, uh, not really because uh, I don't want to end up with poison ivy. I, I've had uh, a lot of uh, um, allergy problems in the last few years. I don't know. I, I used to be uh, uh, impervious to uh, poison ivy, but nowadays all I have to do is walk by it and I can get it. Uh. So, so uh, yeah, I don't know, and it's and it's a big undertaking, uh, and and that's why I say it. it's a really big undertaking down there, and you got the stones that are uh, kind of almost blocking the entrance there now. Um, I think uh, I would I would think that we could get the town to take a uh, the swath cutter or some kind of machine down there and and just put up a. a and widen it out that way, you know, with a with a machine. As far as mm -hmm. cleaning it out, I don't know. Just cut it and and leave it there to rot might be fine too, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, that's that's quite a distance down to get, you know, down there all that way. And and uh, um, and I do believe uh, from the research that I did, it's not a state thing it's a town access so uh uh it was more of a although it is on the on the uh a boat ra of, it is on the the chart as a boat ramp for in the state but it is not a a state boat ramp right so it's a town access thing and um i would even go as so far to say it's only only town residents access kind of thing you know um I don't know if that's something that you can do, or, uh, but uh, the town really should, really should, you know, regrade that, even with some, uh, uh, whether it be gravel or whether it be the uh, the fill from the uh, from the roads that get uh, torn up. You know, that stuff's really, I'm sure that stuff's pretty much free or cheap. You know, um, and uh, go down there with a couple of hundred yards of uh, of that stuff and fill in the road fill in the big 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 huge uh, uh puddles you know the mm -hmm. big, big deep areas and smooth it all out uh i think if they smoothed it out you'd get a better drainage to both sides as well you know because now it's just sitting there in the middle and uh it's not far above sea level right there so it's like maybe a couple of feet above sea level <laughs> and uh uh, it just, when it fills up with water, the water stays, I mean, I haven't been down there for a year, but it's a foot, it's a foot deep in those two big, the two big, big puddles, a uh, foot deep when after a good rain. You mean uh, the one at Jack's Island? What's that? You mean the one at Jack's Island? 
Jack's Island. Yeah, exactly. But when it's the power, I see it from my house. People yeah. launch boats there. Yeah, Jack's Island. That's, I call that the Sapawit one because no. that's not Sapawit one. No, Jack's Island's totally different. Oh, Jack's Island. Well, that's a that's a public access too. That's the one I'm talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, Sapawit. Just before, if you're south of the bridge, come up from south. Just before you get on the bridge, there's a place where people launch their boats. Uh, this advantage is that. You can't get in and out of Sapawa Marsh except for at high tide. Yeah, I don't know. Is that a public access point? Pretty much, pretty much to be able to use the marsh. Yeah. So I see them. Usually they're paddling, sometimes electric motors, sometimes a small gasoline-powered outboard motor. They yeah. Stay in the marsh. Um, hang on a second. I'm going to start up my... Well, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a couple of minutes. I'm going to start my open CPN and, and see if that's a public access uh, uh, boat place or, or, or what we have marked on our... Uh, take a minute uh, for this all to come up. I'm a little bit lost on the... Uh... Agenda. We got three different locations we're talking about now. I thought it was just yeah. It, 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 I, I, I when I tell, when I talk about a boat ramp or a boat launch or a, 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 I'm talking about Jack's Island. Jack's Island. I, I didn't know there was any. I mean, I know there's a, a a public access to the beach area down down there, but I'm not calling that a boat a boat launch or a, it's or, on the or a side boat side ramp of any kind. Uh, that's not the one that's listed on the, uh, the map. Let me see. I got. Uh, so, Chip, you're saying that there's a, a an access point down by the uh, marsh there. Yes, that's correct. As you come south of the power point. Yep. Saying so south of the bridge. the bridge. Right there, there is a place you can definitely get your kayaks and small boats. And people do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Sta that's called the state fishing area. Area. Well, but, the whole thing. You know, I don't know about any boat launching yeah. down there yeah. or yeah. dinghy launching, small boat launching. Uh, but the the one that uh, the one that has the boat launch is the uh, the ramp. It says ramp inlet ja uh, drive Jack's Island. It's two that's, different that's, places. That's what I'm talking about. That road that gets yeah. there. I'm trying to get. You know, we we should have the town. Regrade that road and open it back up, and it's about uh, I don't know a quarter of a mile maybe from uh, from the uh, Sapawit Road to uh, to Jack's Island to the water. You know, maybe a quarter of a mile. Yeah. That's why I was that's why I was thinking cutting back, cutting that that back would be quite an undertaking. You know, on both sides of that road there. We, I think we did discuss last month that there is no place in there that you could park a car and a trailer. So that we were talking about recharacterizing it from something other than a boat ramp. Right to a to a I don't know what what we had. It was on the agenda uh, on the uh, minutes last last week's minutes. I don't have those in front of me right now. Gotta... And so we're. Now, Chip, when you say people can launch down at the southern Sapawit access point there by the bridge, you're saying they're putting in boats. What they're putting in small flat bottom boats and kayaks and such? Or? Yeah, they put in kayaks. They put in small, uh, you know, uh, rowboat row boat size. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You, you can't put a trailer in there. No, not really. No, I mean, it's not. There's no trailer ramp there. It's really. Boats, it's kayaks and, yeah. and, and light boats. It's, I used to launch uh, tours there, and you can't. Certainly, I have seen folks with small trailers put it in there. Oh, hey. yeah. I mean, no, yeah, that I'm supposed to or not. I have seen them do it. That's no. the state. Uh, Sapawa no. is a state fishing area, right? No, so it's marked as a state fishing area. So if somebody wants to put a small area. boat in. Game management area. Yeah, yeah. Game fishing, game management area. A number yep. of folks do fish in there. They crab in there fairly frequently. No, it's, a, it's a great spot, but it's it's not a real launching ramp. 
Yeah. In terms of, in terms of the minutes, though, the the topic we've always been talking about here has been Jack's Island and Fogland boat ramp. Correct. Yeah. Correct. The discussion of something else in Zapata is a new item that right. we talked about before. So do we stick to the two items, or are we going off in a third direction now? No, I think we I'm should stick to the two items. Direction, so you know that there is effectively a boat launch in the Zapata. Then we don't have to talk about it anymore. Yeah. All right. Well, exactly. we, we, we can call it if we can do the call it Jack's Island or Sapawit North and Sapawit South, and you know they're both basically <clears throat> water access points where you can launch sm small boats, no trailers. Right. Though obviously people do get down in both locations with trailers. I, there's one guy with an orange SUV that <clears throat> I see down there. If I go out on the water on the weekend, I just about guarantee I see his orange SUV, whatever it might be, down there. Yeah, he doesn't have a trailer on it. I actually talked to him once. He's not a, not friendly. He was not a conversationalist. <laughs> Is he a town resident, or at least? Have no idea. Yeah. Probably from Mass. He's from East Providence. Uh, the uh, uh, our, my neighbor here called the police because he's he's there three, four, five days a week. And wow. Uh, my neighbor, yeah, called the police and went out, just talked to him, tried to, and he just, and he's got a, either a wife or girlfriend who's usually with him, and he just likes being there, and apparently nothing else going on, and he just hangs out there for hours and hours, so. <laughs> yeah. See, that's mm -hmm. why I thought that, that Jack's Island was a town access, a town public access, you know, not so much a state public access or a you know, for anybody to go down, but, uh, I mean, there is a, you know, I don't know if the, how the, what the rules are on these public access points, but that's, that's one, uh, and, and the other public access is, of course, uh, let me zoom out here, is the next one down, there's, uh, there's a Bonnefield Drive public access, then, the next one and the north side and then there's the other one next on the non-quit pond is a public access point and then the the boat ramp the next one is the boat ramp that's uh Fogland. At, at Fogland, yeah right so uh and then there's also another one uh it's not a boat ramp though at, at end of Fogland road and then there's uh end of shore road which is uh, you take Fogland Road and you take that left and go to the very end of that, and there's another public access point down there. That's no trailer there. That's just no, no, no trailer. Yeah, and there's two more public access points right. uh, it, on Fogland. Uh, one on I think on the on the uh, on the east side of the uh, where the shallow side of Fogland Island is. And another one, um, um, and that's just another public fishing area. So, uh, the beach. Yeah, I've, I've lost beach. track of what we're talking about here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gotten yeah, so, so no, I'm just going far. down yeah. from Sapawa, all, all the different public public yeah. fishing well, we were, areas. The, the, the item on the agenda is the, the various ramps. Yeah. So yeah. So it's, nothing's happening with those. We need to get the state to to refurbish the Fogland, and we need to get the town to regrade the road and cut the sides uh, uh, so the path is a little wider at the uh, Jack's Island. I'll try to do a, I'll try to do a letter to the DPW about the um, just Jack use the the Jack's Island the North yeah. to Powett access, Let's if you will. Move on. Yeah. Now the next uh, the uh, have have my tech people been able to translate the um, gobbledygook we got from the uh, U.S. Geological Survey. Um, that was not the USGS. That was the private survey that was done of, right. on the river, correct? Right. Well, that's... Yeah. Um, so I was able to get the files. I was able to get a viewer that could read the files, but I couldn't figure out yet how to tile them together. So I would say I'm halfway there. Okay, but does it look like something you, would it be helpful? Now, we, Greg, I think, was the one who managed to get a hold of the people, right, Greg? 
He did, yeah. And and Greg's correspondence with them helped me take the next step. I can't yet tell whether they're useful because I can't view them the way I, I want to, but at least I right. have a viewer now that recognizes the files and I can bring them up in individual segments. So the answer is um, keep working on it. Um, my and I'm not, I'm not doing anything with it. I, I, that's beyond me. So I'm glad Andy uh, has a handle on it and is trying to do something with it. Might it be helpful to you, Andy, to correspond directly with those people? Do we have a phone well, number? For yeah, them? Greg copied me on them and I can talk to them directly if I need to. Okay. So I'll, I'll keep working on it. I'll get there. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, the next item is the dinghy. It just says dinghy landing at Stonebridge abutment. It strikes me that Gene commented to me the other day, how do people get out to those boats there on the moorings? And I said, they have, there are some dinghies there just on the other side of the wall um, that you can't see. So I got to amend that to the dinghy dock landing, but they also, whether or not we should reconsider pursuing the idea of a dinghy landing area there. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, yes. Stewart, with regards to people we, putting dinghies there all the time. We definitely do. I just I just move my boat up from Newport to the basin, and there's no way to get to the boat, and it's really a problem. And uh, uh, you know, I've got a fairly decent system, I'm inflatable, and I've got to launch it every time, which is a real hassle. And it is that asset is tremendous, and we really have to do something about developing. Yeah. It's and it really, it, you know, Bruce and I, we spent quite a bit of time measuring it. We've got the floats, we got the ramps, we got, and we could probably raise money somehow. But we, we really are missing a very important opportunity. Yeah, we had a budget item. I had no clue as to what's going on with the town budget at this point. Well, it was ten thousand bucks, which would have been great. But I mean, I, I think if we put the word out, I mean, people would volunteer. I, it, it just. It's a shame if that's a shame. Do you still I don't think it's so much to getting the volunteers and getting the docks in there. I think it's more so getting the the design so we don't have a liability to access the docks from the the bridge, from the uh from the Stone Bridge Pier. We saw Bruce and I sorted that out. It's it's doable. The whole thing's doable. Yeah, yeah, sure enough it's doable, but we need to have an engineer, engineer stairs, and engineer uh, transition from the pad to the, you know, the stairway, and then uh, how are we going to attach the uh, uh, th the uh, ramp to uh, to the pad to the wooden the wooden pad existing, mm -hmm. and and the ramp is going to go down to the uh, the ramp is going to go down to the uh, uh, Look. floaters and the floaters uh, only have three attachment points and I don't know if that's sufficient but uh, we talked to get an engineer to look at putting three more poles in so we could uh, raise the uh, have six poles to raise the, the three sections of uh, floaters for the winter on uh, hang them up on uh, on chains, you know. There's um, a guy I've worked. There's a guy I've worked with, and Bruce knows, and Brendan Lund, and he could get in there and figure that thing out in 15 minutes how to make it work. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, and it, probably any one of us could. But it's not the point of making it work. It's the point of getting a drawing and having having it done the right way, so there's no liability. He's that's what his business is. He could do oh. that. Oh, great! Maybe uh, we can no, get him. He's not. He's not an engineer, David. He is, he's a, you know, an installer. He follows. He's the an plans. installer, but Bruce, it's not rocket science to figure out how to do it. I understand. All the big things are there. Yeah. You and I looked. If we move the curb a little bit, we've already got the ramp. I mean, yeah. it's just, we, we're throwing up obstacles. Obviously, it needs some work, but it's just, we can move forward on it. You know, uh, I don't think it's we're throwing up obstacles, especially not me. That's not my intent. My intent is to have something safe, a safe transition from the pier to the landing and a safe transition. And do we need railings, handrails? Do we need, you know, and uh, God forbid somebody gets hurt, you know? Yeah. No, I, we hear you That's all I'm trying to say. 
I'm not yeah. trying to kibosh anything. I'd want I want that uh, dinghy dock there probably just as much as anybody else does. No, uh, if not more. I'd love to no, see you're, it. There. You're right, but I think most of the work is there. We've got the right facilities. That ramp is a very expensive ramp that we have for nothing. The floats are in great shape. It's 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 just. Um, I'm sure the town's going to want to see some kind of design or plan. Uh, question, Dave: Does um, Humphreys have any kind of engineering or planning set? You know, uh, services on, on on their site? Do you know? Humphreys Lumber. Yeah. No, you, you have to hire a guy like uh, you know, either Waterman Engineering or New England. You know, I mean, you have to get somebody. I suppose, but it's. Yeah. You know, well, what's his name over in uh, Bru uh, Blanchard, well, Ron Blanchard could probably do it. You know, uh, what about but, Bill uh, Smith? What's that? Bill Smith in Little Compton. He does docks and stuff, doesn't he? Uh, he does. He's an option. Bill's a good guy, but he's a little slow, but uh, he's a good guy. But, you know, I mean, it's, you know. I, yeah, the, the, the issue is always the, the good old dollar and cents. I guess we could ask them for RFPs and um, and see what they come back with. I mean, I, I backing up one step, I think it's very important if the Harbor Commission can have a meeting sometime with the new town council and let them know who we are, what we're doing, and some of our priorities. And that is certainly a priority. Yes, I agree. And, you know, it's... In, they did the last council, you know, obviously before the, all these issues, they vote, they gave us 10,000 bucks, which would have been more than enough, in my opinion, to get the design done. We already own all of the hardware. Right. And, and I think you could get volunteers to do it. I mean, you could get, you know, Fred, you get, what's his name, uh, Jimmy uh, from uh, Tiger Landscaping. I mean, these guys, you know, we've got a resource of really good people. And, it would add so much to that harbor. And you know, I've been having my boat there for a month. I can't even get to it, which is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. so, Don't you already have plans though? Because you're just repairing the existing. I'm sorry? Dock. Don't you already have plans from where the dock used to be? And just, you're, it's just under repair permit. So shouldn't there still be plans from the original dock? Well, the problem, Tyler, is the yeah. fact we're going to transition from the new bridge abutment to the existing platform. And right. while common sense tells you you could do that with straightforward stairs and you, it's not rocket science, you still, because it's a public uh, site, you need to access it with a, you have to put, cover it with an engineered design. The question becomes whether or not you need to make it also ADA compliant, which I think we probably could pretty easily, even with a, compli with a compliant structure. Because uh, we have the distance, but it, it, the 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 problem is, you know, I'm the first guy to say I'll just go do and build a damn thing, but uh, we're not. That's me and my private enterprise, not my not the public enterprise. That's the problem. Um, I think we probably need an engineer for a few steps because everything else been approved by CRMC and it's proven to work. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Oh, yeah. The yeah. platform and the site is all there. It'd be strictly a, a maintenance permit, maybe a minor modification permit, and that's that's not a big deal. I mean, I can draw that up. It's the engineering, the designing of it, having somebody put their imprimatur of approval on it, and that costs money. You know, we're good. Yeah. having a meeting, having a meeting with the town council and showing them that we have so much of the resources ready to go. The design is, you know, really the smallest part. You know, it's a minor part of the whole program. That that was done with the prior council. That's why I got the ten thousand dollars. Right. The, the town uh, town DPW guy was there. He had yeah. thrown up a budget as well. Uh, Idly enough, we had the exact same budget. Mine was more of a, a throw it at throw the dart at the wall because I know what these things go. He's had actually been broken out in his guesstimation as to labor and time and you know addressing the uh pilings and such um so i think the next we got to reach out to him to see if there's a uh, any engineering capability there if not then we gotta get it do an rfp to the various engineering companies and say this is what we want to do 
And this right. is not, this is a small, this is a small budget item. This is not a big budget item. Um, it's very small oh, considering what it there. could do for the town. It's, oh yeah. It's a big asset. I mean, it would help the retail, it would help with beach, it would just, it would, and it's there. The whole thing is basically there. Just Dave, with your involvement with the the um, rehabilitation of the area on the south side of the abutment, you guys did a lot of fundraising for the town for that. We raised four hundred thousand bucks, and I, you know, a lot of that was touch? no. We raised uh, three hundred. Uh, we could, donations we brought in for that thing about uh, eighty thousand dollars worth of uh, private donations. That's still a lot of money. That would kill us. A lot of money. It'd knock it out of the park. Oh yeah, I mean we're talking. We're talking yeah, we'd, be, we'd be able to put a whole marina there. Oh, yeah, no, right. Not quite. Not quite, but uh, I guarantee you, we. It's like get the engineer to give us an estimate. Of yes, what some RFPs. It's a place to start. Then go to the town town council or go to the lawyer, right? Town councilor. See what they say about what we have to do, given this is all you need to do. I really think you could raise private funds to cover a lot of that. I really do. It's no, not, yeah. I think it'd be so cheap, wouldn't be hard. I'd be willing. To I agree, Chip. I agree with you. I, we're not, we own all of the expensive stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's well, sitting in the town yard rotting. It's not rotting, but it's going to rot if it stays there too long. The wooden ones are going to rot. The aluminum will be there forever, but those wooden dots, we yeah. used to in front of my store, and uh, they, they don't last forever, you know? And, yep. You know? And those right. things are in good shape. If we can move on to the next item. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm, going to, I'm, going to put, I'm going to put together an RFP, and people can send me engineers' names that they know. We can throw it out to them and say, hey, this is a simple deal, because uh, I have a file on the damn thing. Um, flood hazard mitigation, uh, pull of elevations such. I've reached out to Jacques Alfonso. Unfortunately, I only reached out two times and we tagged on it. So I've got to get back to him. Um, and we've got to talk about the design as to the means of doing it. Um, let's see if I can get him. One of the problems that they have is they, Every project they do, they can only have one man in a truck. So, you know, it's crazy, but it is what it is. That's why you see so many of them when they're doing the pole replacements. It's not that they need that many trucks. It's they need those trucks to transport. That's guys that are doing the work. One guy per truck. Um, aquaculture ordinances. That would be, that would comes up on the, the Harbor Management Plan um design and added via zoom or other means um have my tech guys figured out how we could have on screen a shared screen with a split screen or you know, do a shared screen work on this we were talking about trying to break it out into components last time uh, but even then we'd need to come back and share it on a screen I've been working with somebody that does, we, they you know, do their screen sharing very easily um, with a solar project that I'm working on as council. Um, I mean, all of these conferencing software, Zoom included, allows you to share a screen. So if you got a group of people working, they could share a screen, one person you know, doing the editing while other people are, are um, you know, piping in on the discussion. So that's, that's not hard. Okay. We could probably even do it with, uh, with, with the conferencing tool we've got right now. Oh yeah, I do that. Share my screen definitely on okay. Zoom, on on Skype. Yep. So you can do it on Skype. You can do it on Zoom. You can do it on on free conference it's call. Go to meeting. Teams. Uh, I don't have access to anything. Um, none of that stuff works on my computer except go to meeting. So. The only one that works on my computer, but uh, what's go to meeting? It's another one of these conferencing. I it, it's a it's a paid service, but um, 
you know, um, there are a bunch of them that are free. Zoom is free. Yeah. I've got a Zoom account. You know, um, who who says it doesn't work on their computer? My Paul, Paul Duart. It should, it, Paul. I mean, have have you just not not loaded it or what? No, I can't load it, and I have old have an old computer. It's it's an old well, it's not that old, but it's it's uh it's got uh, it's not supported for okay, my. Okay, well, if uh, you have a browser, you can I, I, any I do, one of. But, any one of these, you can be a participant as long as you're not sharing your screen. No, I can't. You can participate it, it, from it your browser. It won't even let me load it. I have uh, uh, Windows uh, uh, Vista. You do. Maybe do, if yeah. I had uh, uh, Windows 8 or something, but with the, my yeah. operating system, it won't allow me to, to load it. And I don't have a good uh, uh, feeling about uh, any of it because my, uh, my virus protection, I have... And I think that's got something to do with it because the updates for my virus protection are supported with Windows uh, 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 Vista, which is a premium. I have Vista Premium, but it doesn't matter. It's it's uh, just not supported. Well, what we could do is is have a conference, uh, and you would could sit in a room with somebody. Yeah. And everybody yeah. else, everybody else could be remote. Yeah, I'd be good with that. And we could. Oh, you can come to my house. We could certainly. Do yeah, I'd be fine with that. And I could. We could certainly sit so many feet apart and wear our mask. And uh, I'll put you in the garage. There you go. <laughs> the heat in there is the heat. No, of course. <laughs> okay. All right. So we need to start thinking about how we're going to organize and put that together, and schedule it because we you know want to start moving that forward um or people had while well, we're gonna have a 70 degree weekend coming up i'm told oh, nice. um people putting away boats and such uh what are people's feelings about when we could be able to meet well now that my boats are put away my availability has gone way up so I'm, I can pretty much hit any time target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, flexible myself. Uh, I'd, uh... The people, my, what, what are people's preferences? Are they pre preference evenings or a Saturday morning or what are, what are preferences? I'd Early like Saturdays. Avoid, I'd like to avoid the weekends if I could. Right. Yeah, I feel the same way. I like to do an evening right. uh, thing. Better. I do it either time, but evenings are better. And in any particular day of the week, it's better than not. I mean, obviously, no one wants to do it on Fridays. Uh, most of the time. Monday or Tuesday. All right. I'll throw out a series of dates and such. Um, to see if we can get it moving forward. I, my night meetings have slowed down right now. Um, he's probably on the zoning board who's going to get me my own name plaque. I was there so often. Uh, didn't we, at, at one of the last meetings, didn't we discuss dividing the plan up? Amongst yes, we did. And let people try to do some work ahead of time, and then I guess basically present a new draft of those pieces. We did, and um, we could take a look at the, how it's currently set up and see what people feel best on, what sections are most appropriate for them. Um, there was also <laughs> some talk about getting uh, the one from Bristol and kind of make, making, uh, making that ours. Uh, but I never saw the one from Bristol. Yeah, well, ours is actually pretty good. It went it, with the base platform that we have just needs updating it way back when, when it was put together, yeah. we, we looked at Bristol's extensively and did follow through to use their outline. And that's the platform that we have. And now we just got to bring it into the, you know, the year two, two, uh, 2000 <clears throat> and beyond, you know, it's been several years since it was uh, yeah. last cast. Um, so we can. yeah, because I remember when last time we met at the Yacht Club, we didn't have a heck of a lot to do. No, we were making great progress. A lot 
lot of it was done already. I know, uh, uh, was it Jason and Greg had uh, done a lot of work on it too already? Well, Jason and Greg and their, and their, their technical, their, they were work, had their technology working so that they, we could all see it. That was the beautiful part about that. Yeah, yeah. And pretty clearly with the current rise up on COVID, we're not going to get together in one spot. Yeah. Um, and this also will have to be done as a public meeting, correct? When we yeah, are wants to listen working, into the work. Right. And, and, and as was that Saturday morning meeting, I had actually noticed that. I published that as a, as a noticed meeting. And it's so, so it ours. And quite honestly, I think we'd get all the attendance we're getting tonight as well. Um, if we were to do another one and come along and go, oh. Um, all right. So. I'll throw out some dates and we'll look at how we break up the parts and pieces so people can work on it. Um, the town sent over, you know, the, the town administrator and he wants it by tonight naturally, of course. So the, the fines and penalties and all the things you can get in trouble for in town. Um, the only thing that struck me is I want to make sure that they're Tyler, I have a question. When you send out mooring invoices, are you you're using the grid system, right? In terms of the board, the base boat, and then the the price per foot, correct? Correct. Okay. So we'll, I'll make sure he's aware of the fact that our mooring fees are graduated, as opposed to being um, just a one shot deal like it, like his little grid here says for for um for them for right on the shirt Tyler what's the status of the boat I'm still running good probably haul it out in a few weeks okay do we have much in the way of activity on the water I'd imagine not I mean no, there's not much going on now. Yeah. All righty. Very good. All right. Well, I've got some homework cut out for me to do up some RFPs, letters to the town regarding the uh, Sapawit North access. And um, Andy, you're going to work, continue working on the private survey. Yep. And uh, um, on, on the Boats on the fees for the boats. Is, uh, I was looking at page two. Yeah, uh, there's still something that says not yet established by council on there. It's for boats, waterways, marine, toilet, and uh, sewage discharge. Right. That's uh, that's a state uh, supposedly state mandated uh, rule for that, and we should uh, be in step with the state uh, DEM with that. Mm -hmm. uh, DEM has a has a fine of uh, first offense of uh, I think a hundred dollars, and if it's not corrected, it's uh, the town's tax rate for the value of the boat. Uh, that's uh, that's what I was told when I went for my training at the uh, um, at the DEM for marine toilets and sewers discharge. Uh, and then the other one, this is a... Uh, so you're trying to say that, it, what's the town tear right now, David? 18 or $19 per thousand? Uh, I think it's, no, I think it's down 16. <laughs> yeah. Times the value of your boat? Times the oh, value oh, of the boat. Oh, I'm about real estate. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's... It's a tear rate. Yeah. It's a rate for each town, so uh, each town could create uh, the fine appropriately. I mean, the original the first first offense, uh, uh, and then and then I think there's a a period where you can fix that and have that inspected, have the boat inspected, and then the second offense if you uh, if they come back and you still don't have it fixed, then it's a more stringent. Uh, Fine. And that's that's basically having a system in place, correct, Paul? Yes, yes. So every boat that has a, a marine toilet uh, that has a, a discharge has to 
is supposed is supposed to have the uh, four year sticker. It's a four year sticker on it. Now, what are you doing about? How do you access the four year stickers now? You go to uh, Marina that that does the inspection, and they charge. Up, they can only charge up to thirty dollars. Um, I I have uh, I have a. Uh, a certificate that allows me to check the boats, as because I'm in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, right? And and um, and it's one of my requirements for for doing a vessel safety check that 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 the that the vessel has that discharge sticker. Um, I'm supposed to, I, although I don't sometimes, but uh, I just tell the per, the owner that uh, they need to get that done. Um, not every marina. Does it and now? All the marinas are being bought up by uh, uh, what's that? Uh, Safe Harbor. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well, Safe Harbor has been bought. Yeah. Day. But I know the Bristol uh, Bristol um, uh, Harbor Master uh, is a is an agent, and I can buy stickers through him. As anybody who's an agent, I think Tiverton uh, is an agent as well, but they don't. They're not active. Um, Tiverton and Yacht Club? Master, uh, Tyler Kenny, can Kenny buy is, the stickers from the inspector. state. And then the state, uh, they would be um, reimbursed by, you know, actually doing the inspections, you know, uh, and charge up to 30 I think it's $5 to, for a sticker from the state. Okay. So you, you can acquire stickers, Paul, correct? No, I can't. I'm not an agent. I, I'm only an inspector. So you can't get we can't get stickers through you. No, I I no no I have to have to get them through. I can get them through the Bristol uh, Harbor Master. So what's the process? Walk me through the process. We have I have a boat. I have to have a new sticker because mine's long gone. Right. You could go to the Bristol Harbor Master and get it. I done. don't want to go to the Bristol Harbor Master. That's a thousand miles away from here. I want to go well, to Tiverton. Can't get it done otherwise. Course. You can go to any marina in Tiverton, Portsmouth. They all do it. Uh, I don't know. Kenny don't do it anymore, does yes, he? Yes, I, I, I know for a fact Kenny does it. Oh, he, he does. does. Safe he Harbor does, does, Park it. does it and Safe Harbor's Common Fence Point does it. I, oh, there you go. So there you go. Anyone around here does them. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it's a state requirement, you know. And uh, I think we should, as far as if this is going to be, this fees uh, should be, uh, we should respect the, the, the state and their, re, and their requirements. Oh, I agree. It probably can't override it. Anyways, they're probably, yeah. obviously, a controlling entity. Yeah. Tyler, let me ask you a question. Have you ever in your entire career as Harbor Master, which now spans half a dozen years, five years? Yeah, I think six now. Six. Have you ever given out a speeding ticket? Um, I have not. Hmm. A speeding ticket? Oh, yeah, you have excess, you know, we have these all these fines laid out here. I laugh at when I see it, but We definitely speed through the harbor. Some people do. Yeah. Some people do. All right. I'll be that as it may. Let's not digress too far. Time for dinner. Time to adjourn. Anyone else have any comments, any uh, suggestions for the good of the order, as it were? Hey, nope. could you just summarize? I'm, I'm trying to record the minutes for that section on this fines and penalties right track of all the discussion what, what's the important piece to put in here uh the important piece is that i will confirm with the administrator that the mooring fees are on a gradiated schedule i'll make sure he has it um and that the dem the uh that would be uh the mooring one is the 14 hyphen 176 and then the uh water septic is the sewerage issue is uh 14 195 and what what are you doing with those last two? You're just confirming that they're still accurate. I'm going to make sure the administrator knows that our mooring fees are based upon a a graduated uh, schedule, and that the 
reference should be made to the state DEM uh, standards for fines and penalties. Very simple. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Just, uh, I'll do my motion. I just want to ask Tyler if I could uh, chat with him. So I'd like to I text you and I hope we can communicate. Thanks, Tyler. Phyllis, have a good evening. Welcome to the group. Thank you. We weren't too bored. Very interesting. All righty. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.